and so Imagineering, a couple of years later, was working on a virtual reality project. This was top secret. They were denying the existence of a virtual reality attraction after the time that the publicity department was running the TV commercials. <laughs> okay, so Imagineering really had nailed this one tight. And uh, it was the Aladdin attraction where you would fly a magic carpet. And the head mounted display, sometimes known as Gator Vision. Uh, and so I had an in. As soon as the, the, the project had just, you know, they started running the TV commercials. And I had been asked to brief the Secretary of Defense on the state of virtual reality. Okay, Fred Brooks and I uh, had been asked to brief the Secretary of Defense. And uh, that gave me an excuse. So I, I called them up, I called Imagineering, and I said, look, I'm briefing the Secretary of Defense. I'd like some materials on what you have because it's one of the best VR systems in the world. And they kind of pushed back and I said, look, is all this patriotism stuff in the parks a farce? And they're like, hmm, okay. Uh, <laughs> they said, but the, but the PR department doesn't, ha this is so new, the PR department doesn't have any footage for you, so I'm gonna have to connect you straight through to the team who did the work. Jackpot. Right? <laughs> so I find myself on the phone with a guy named John Snotty, who is one of the most impressive guys I have ever met. And he was the guy running this team, and it's not surprising they had done impressive things. And uh, so he sent me some stuff, we talked briefly, he sent me some stuff, and I said, hey, I'm gonna be out in the area for a conference shortly, would you like to get together and have lunch? <laughs> Translation, I'm going to lie to you and say that I have an excuse to be in the area so I don't look too anxious, but I would go to Neptune to have lunch with you. <laughs> uh, and so John said, sure. And uh, I spent something like 80 hours talking with all the VR experts in the world, saying if you had access to this one unbelievable project, what would you ask? And then I compiled all of that and I had to memorize it, which anybody who knows me knows that I have no memory at all because I couldn't go in looking like a dweeb with, you know, hi, question 72, right? <laughs> so I went in and this was like a two hour lunch and John must have thought he was talking to, you know, some phenomenal person because all I was, do was doing was channeling Fred Brooks and Ivan Sutherland and Andy Van Dam and people like that and Henry Fuchs. So it's pretty easy to be smart when you're parroting smart people. Uh, and at the end of the lunch with John, I sort of, as we say in the business, made the ask. And I said, you know, I have a sabbatical coming up. And he said, what's that? <laughs> the beginnings of the culture clash. Uh, and so I talked to him about the possibility of coming there and working with him. And uh, he, uh, he said, well, that's really good, except, you know, you're in the business of telling people stuff and we're in the business of keeping secrets, right? And then what made John Snotty John Snotty was he said, but we'll work it out, right? Which I really love. The other thing that I learned from John Snotty, I could do a, easily an hour long talk just on what have I learned from John Snotty. One of the things he told me was that wait long enough and people will surprise and impress you. He said, when you're pissed off at somebody and you're angry at them, you just haven't given them enough time. Just give them a little more time and they'll almost always impress you. And that really stuck with me. I think he's absolutely right on that one. Uh, so uh, to make a long story short, we negotiated uh, a legal contract. It was going to be the first, some people refer to it as the first and last paper ever published by Imagineering. But the deal was I go, I, I provide my own funding, I go for six months, I work with a project, we publish a paper. Um, and then we meet our villain. <laughs> I can't be all sweetness and light because I have no credibility. Somebody's head's gonna go on a stick. Turns out that the person who gets his head on the stick is a dean back at the University of Virginia. His name is not important, let's call him Dean Wormer. <laughs> and Dean Wormer has a meeting with me where I say I wanna do this sabbatical thing and I've actually gotten the Imagineering guys to let an academic in, which is insane. I mean, if John hadn't gone nuts. This would never have been a possibility. This is a very secretive organization. And Dean Wormer looks at the paperwork and he says, well, it says they're gonna own your intellectual property. And I said, yeah, we got the agreement to publish the paper. There is no other IP. I don't do patentable stuff. And he says, yeah, but you might. So deal's off and just get him, get, get him to change that little clause there <laughs> and then come back to me. I'm like, excuse me? And then I said to him, I want you to understand how important this is. If we can't work this out, I'm gonna take an unpaid leave of absence and I'm just gonna go there, and I'm gonna do this thing. And he said, hey, you know, I might not even let you do that. I mean, you've got the IP in your head already, and maybe they're gonna suck it out of you, so I, that's not gonna fly either.
it's very important to know when you're in a pissing match. <laughs> and it's very important to get out of it as quickly as possible. So I said to him, well, let's back off on this. Do we think this is a good idea at all? He said, I have no idea if this is a good idea. I, you know. I was like, OK, well, we've got common ground there. Uh, <laughs> then I said, well, is this really your call? Isn't this the call of the dean of, of sponsored research, if it's an IP issue? And he said, yeah, that's true. I said, so if he's happy, you're happy? Yeah, then I'd be fine. Like Wally Coyote, a little. <laughs> and I find myself in Gene Block's office, who's the most fantastic man in the world. And I, I start talking to Gene Block, and I say, let's start at the high level, since I don't want to have to back out again. So let's start at the high level. Do you think this is a good idea? He said, well, if you're asking me if it's a good idea, I don't have very much information. All I know is that one of my star faculty members is in my office, and he's really excited, so tell me more. Here's a lesson for everybody in administration. They both said the same thing. But think about how they said it, right? I don't know. Well, I don't have much information, but one of my star faculty members is here, and he's all excited, so I want to learn more. There are both ways of saying I don't know, but boy, there's a good way and a bad way. So anyway, um, we got it all worked out. I went to Imagineering, sweetness and light, and all's well that ends well. <laughs> Some brick walls are made of flesh. <laughs> <clears throat> so I worked on the Aladdin project. It was absolutely spectacular. I mean, just unbelievable. Uh, here's my nephew Christopher. This was the apparatus. You would sit on this sort of motorcycle type thing, and you would steer your magic carpet, and you would put on the head-mounted display. The head-mounted display was very interesting. It had two parts, and it was a very, very clever design. To get throughput through, the only part that touched the guest's head was this little cap, and everything else clicked onto it, all the expensive hardware. So you could replicate the caps, because they were basically free to manufacture. Uh, and uh, this is what I really did, as I was a cap cleaner during this event. <laughs> uh, uh, I loved Imagineering. It was just a spectacular place, just spectacular. Everything that I had dreamed. Uh, I love the model shop. People crawling around on things the size of this room that are just big physical models. Uh, it was just an incredible place to walk around and be inspired. Uh, I'm always reminded of when I went there, and people said, do you think the expectations are too high? And I said, you ever see the movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, where Gene Wilder says to the little boy Charlie, he's about to give him the chocolate factory, he says, well, Charlie, did anybody ever tell you the story of the little boy who suddenly got everything he ever wanted? Charlie's eyes get like saucers, and he says, no, what happened to him? Gene Wilder says, he lived happily ever after. <laughs> OK, so working on the Aladdin VR, I described it as a once in every five years opportunity, and I stand by that assessment. Uh, it, it forever changed me. It wasn't just that it was good work and I got to be a part of it, uh, but it got me into the place of working with real people and real HCI user interface issues. Most HCI people live in this fantasy world of white collar laborers with PhDs and master's degrees. And you know, until you got ice cream spilled on you, you're not doing field work, right? Uh, and more, any, more than anything else from John Snotty, I learned how to put artists and engineers together. And that's been the real legacy. Uh, we published a paper, uh, just a nice academic cultural scandal. When we wrote the paper, the guys at Imagineering said, well, let's do a nice big picture, <laughs> like, like you would in a magazine. And the SIGGRAPH committee, which accepted the paper, it was like this big scandal. Are they allowed to do that? <laughs> there was no rule. <laughs> so we published the paper. And uh, amazingly, since then, there's a tradition of SIGGRAPH papers having color figures on the first page. I, so I've, I've, I've changed the world in a small way. <laughs> And then at the end of my six months, they came to me and they said, you want to do it for real? You can stay. <laughs> and I said no. Uh, one of the only times in my life I have surprised my father. He was like, you what? <laughs> he said, since you were you know, all you wanted, and now they got it, and you're like, huh? <laughs> Uh, there was a bottle of Maalox in my desk drawer. Be careful what you wish for. It was a particularly stressful place. Imagineering in general is actually not so Maalox laden, but the lab I was in, oh, John left in the middle. And it was a lot like the Soviet Union. <laughs> it was a little dicey for a while. Uh, but it worked out okay. And if they had said, stay here or never walk in the building again, I would have done it. I would have walked away from tenure. I would have just done it. 